Okay, so let's talk about cluster A personality disorders. There are three distinct personality disorders that you can think of as cluster A. And what I'm going to try and do for you is to point out the most common things that you're going to see with this group of personality disorders. And then when we speak about each one, I'm going to try and give you a character in your mind that you can visualize um, uh, what the personality disorder looks like by associating that disorder with this character, okay? And each of these characters I have posted on the Blackboard site. So you can go and watch the character and look for those traits that are specific to that personality disorder to try and make that association because there are in total nine personality disorders that you're going to try and have to keep straight. And so, you know, I, the, this association seems to work really good for students. So let's talk about cluster A personality disorders. What is the key traits of these three disorders? They are being eccentric and odd. That's the simplest way to, to say it. They are very eccentric and, and just really odd people. They are socially isolated and detached. Um, they typically present in early adulthood. Um, these individuals typically are, are severely ill and even can be resistant to um, the treatment, the counseling treatment to try and um, offset their thought processes. These individuals are often seen in acute care settings and may require case management because they just cannot, um, they cannot uh, function in society and they have difficulty or impairments with that day-to-day -day functioning. Um, personality disorders again cannot be diagnosed until a person is over 18 because of brain development. Um, so we want to keep that in mind also. So you're going to be dealing with adults with personality disorders. So let's talk about paranoid personality disorder. Um, the key characteristics there are listed for you, but paranoia should be pretty easy for you to remember. They're very suspicious. They might be hostile and viol uh, violent. Um, they're very secretive. They're emotionally cold and um, excessively serious, okay? So paranoid personalities, they believe or suspect that others are trying to harm them in some way. They um, have doubts about your loyalty or trustworthiness, and not only the nurse, but this can be their family and friends also. Um, they read into things to find hidden meanings to everything, and they may dis uh, de uh, demonstrate uncontrolled behaviors and unwillingness to forgive, or ho they'll hold grudges. They're very difficult to inter interview because they just will not confide information in, to you just for these reasons, okay? Um, they may interpret your actions as um, being deliberate attempts or threats to them, and they are very angry. They are very uh, prone to anger and aggressive outbursts. So make sure that you understand with the paranoid that safety is a huge issue. Safety for yourself, for them and others around. So remember, you know, keeping that distance, that appro pro appropriate distance to keep yourself safe in case they should um, turn aggressive. So they, the defense mechanism that they typically will use is product, projection, and that's that they blame others for everything. Okay, um, Communication, they avoid it. Um, so as nurses, we need to make sure that we're giving clear and straightforward explanations on everything that we're going to do so that they know ahead of time what our intention is and what we are going to do do so that they aren't startled or all of a sudden um, become aggressive or paranoid because they um, don't know what you're doing and they think that you're trying to harm them, okay? So clear and straightforward explanations on everything that we do. Um, we're going to keep that neutral affect. We are not going to let them get to us. 
um, and we're going to avoid trying to be too nice, okay? Um, therapy for paranoid um, personality disorders is basically that psychotherapy to try and um, unlearn all the thought and thought disturbances and um, uh, dysfunctional perceptions that they have. There may be some group therapy, although group therapy usually isn't very beneficial for the paranoid personalities, um, more of the one-on-one -on -one interactions. Um, because the paranoid person is paranoid, would be paranoid of all the people in the group. So that setting may not be very good for them. The one-on-one -on -one psychotherapy, and then sometimes um, they'll add an antidepressant like a SSRI or a SNRI um, to work on the person's anxiety levels. Okay, the next personality disorder in cluster A is um, schizoid personality disorder, okay? Um, schizoid personality disorder's primary feature is emotional detachment, okay? Think of these people as very cold. They have few friends, um, few relatives that still communicate with them. Um, they do not seek out others for enjoyment or relationships. They're very, uh, they're loners, they're introverted, um, solitary, kind of like a hermit guy, right? Um, they, they lack the emotional um, involvement. So you can think of them as just being emotionally cold and detached, a flat affect. They avoid eye contact, things like that, okay? Um, they prefer, you know, solitary activities, and they take pleasure in almost nothing. Um, they try and choose jobs where there's little social interaction. And um, um, so the video that I've uh, put out there to try and help you see, the, or see these traits is um, a video with Anthony Hopkins, okay? And... Um, the, the example is that the maid comes to him and tells him that his father has just died. And Anthony Hopkins says, oh, I see. And then the maid asks if he would want to go see his dad before, you know, he's taken away to the funeral home. And Anthony Hopkins' response is just real stoic. And he says, well, I'm very busy right now. Just very cold, just very cold. That's the best way that I can describe it. Um, what they have found with schizoid personality disorder is that it typically is a precursor to full-blown schizophrenia. Okay, There is a higher chance if the family has a history of schizophrenia um, for a person to have a schizo, schizo, um, schizoid personality disorder. Okay, and treatment for this, again, they may use some antidepressants, um, and they may use some antipsychotics like Risperitol if the person is having any delusional kind of thinking. Um, again, the, the main treatment for all of these personality disorders is that psycho um, cognitive behavioral therapy to try and unlearn all these um, thought processes. Okay, the final personality disorder that we have in this group, or cluster A, is the schizotypal, okay? The schizotypal is um, very peculiar people, okay? They have very odd characteristics. They have magical thinking. Um, they have perceptual distortions. Um, and they're very rigid in their peculiar ideas. So you can think of these people as strange, um, outlandish, um, and over, you know, sometimes they're overly suspicious and um, anxious, okay? They're aloof and detached, and they just have bizarre and mystical beliefs. So they might believe in telepathy or the sixth sense, so they have this... Um, strong belief in the supernatural kind of thing. 
um, they have ideas of reference. And what does that mean? It means giving, giving personal significance to trivial events. So they perceive events as relating to them when it doesn't really relate to them. Okay, so um, they might think if we are saying something to them, they may perceive or have this ide ideation of reference that we are plotting against them. Okay, it's similar to paranoid, but these people, the schizotypal people, are just very peculiar. Now, you know, the, the uh, paranoid people, um, are just paranoid and they're they're shifty and they're looking around and they're they're always skeptical okay um, but the schizotypal is they, they can be paranoid but they are also very peculiar so the video that we've attached to this disorder is um, that of Johnny Depp as Willy Wonka okay and when you watch when you watch that little clip you'll see what it he's just so out there you just nobody would be like that he's very anxious he he hates physical contact he has this distinct speech pattern and he's just socially inept okay so that's how we can think of the schizotypal personality disorder um people with um schizophrenia also, it's been found that the schizotypal personality disorder is related to um, developing schizophrenia. Again, there is thought to be a genetic link. So treatment, um, depending on if they're having perceptual distortions, um, we may be treating them with some antipsychotics. We may be treating them with some antidepressants. Again, that cognitive behavioral therapy is going to be important. And that would end our cluster A. I do not think that I remembered to give you the video clip example for the, for the paranoid. So the video clip for the paranoid personality disorder was a clip of Mel Gibson. And in that clip, he's looking around, he goes up these uh, stairs up onto the roof of his apartment so that nobody will see him go in the front door. And then when he gets to his apartment door, he has like a toothpick stuck in the door so that he would know if somebody had been there. So be behaviors like that for the paranoid. So I hope that the videos help you um, connect the personality disorder with the traits.